We are going to discuss 2.2 today, solving two-step equations. Our goal is to be able to solve two-step equations using one variable. So in the most previous section, we did one-step equations. Today we're going to talk about two-step equations, and it's just the next step up, basically. Uh, there's two operations involved instead of one. So a two-step equation uses two operations, and you want to write that in. And there's an example right below, 2x plus 3 equals 15. As you can see, there is multiplication going on right here and addition going on right here. So there's two operations involved. In order for us to solve two-step equations, we need to identify the operations and undo them using inverse operations. So identify just means say what the operations are and then undo them by using the opposite operations. And something very important right here, we are going to undo the operations in the reverse order of the order of operations. So order of operations is, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. And now we're going to go in the reverse order. So we'll start off with addition and subtraction, then multiplication, division, etc. So let's move on to example one. We have this equation that was mentioned above in your notes, 2x plus 3 equals 15. Let's identify the operations involved. Actually, we already did, but let's go over it again. Multiplication and addition. So we need to do the opposite of addition, which is subtraction. So the first step is minus 3 on both sides. Now that goes away. We have 2x left and we have 12 on the right side. The only operation that's involved is multiplication. The way that we undo multiplication is we divide. Divide by 2 on both sides. The 2's go away. That is equal to 1. x equals, what's 12 divided by 2? That's 6. So x equals 6 is the solution. Now remember the easiest checking way is to plug the 6 in for the x. 2 times 6 is 12 and 12 plus 3 is 15. So that's the, the efficient checking method. Example 2. You are making a bulletin board to advertise community service opportunities in your town. You plan to use half a sheet of construction paper for each ad. You need five sheets of construction paper for a title banner. You have a total of 18 sheets of construction paper. How many ads can you make with those 18 sheets? Now, remember, in order for us to solve this, we need to first identify our variable or define our variable. So you look at the equation, or we're not there yet, we're looking at the question. It says, how many ads can you make? That's going to be our variable, A. A equals number of ads. Now, each ad takes up half a sheet of paper, so we're going to have one half times A because each ad is one half of the paper. And we're already using five sheets of construction paper, so we're doing plus five for the title banner. And how much is total? 18 sheets. So there's our equation. Now we have two operations involved. We have multiplication between the one half and the A, and we have addition right in the, on the right side. So let's get rid of that plus five by subtracting five. Minus five, minus five, the fives go away, the one half A comes down, and 18 minus 5 is 13. Okay, one step left, one half. How do we get rid of that one half? We need to multiply by the reciprocal of one half. What is that? Well, remember, the reciprocal is just the flip, so it's actually just 2 over 1. 2 over 1, and that's 13 is over 1 as well. So those go away. A is left on the left side. And we have 13 times 2. What's double 13? That is 26. So you can make 26 ads with the given information. When one side of an equation is a fraction with more than one term in the numerator, 
we can still undo the division by multiplying each side by the denominator. So let's take a look at example three below. X minus seven divided by three is equal to negative 12. That sentence above just told us we can undo the division by multiplying each side by the denominator. Remember the denominator is just the bottom of the fraction. So the three is in the bottom. Let's multiply both sides by three. The threes cancel out on the left because three divided by three is one. X minus seven equals negative 36. Because I just multiplied the negative 12 and the three. Now we have one step left. Let's get rid of that negative seven by adding. Add seven to both sides. Those go away. X equals negative 29. Now, can you recall, we learned deductive reasoning in chapter one. When we use deductive reasoning, we must state the steps that are involved and the reason behind each step. And we would do that by using properties, definitions, and rules. So let's take a look at our last example. We have the equation negative t plus eight equals three. And that is the original so we're going to write original equation. Now our first step is going to be getting rid of that plus 8. What's the opposite of plus 8? It's minus 8. Minus 8, minus 8 on both sides. Now what property do we use? We use the subtraction property. of equality. I'm going to abbreviate and you can do the same, that's fine. Now let's do our operation. That goes away because that's just zero. Negative t comes down and it's equal to negative five on the other side. Now what number is technically in front of that negative t? Or that t, there's a negative one there. So in the next step we're going to write that. Negative one t equals negative five. And the reason we did that is by the multiplication property of negative one. How do we undo that? Well, it just told us we're using multiplication. So the opposite of multiplication is going to be division. So we need to divide both sides by negative one. And that is the division property of equality. I mentioned in the uh, section 2.1 notes that the name of the operation is in the property. So that is pretty straightforward, which is very, very nice. Okay, now we have t left on the left side and we have positive five on the right. And we just simplified. And that's it, example four is complete. And remember, you can just check your answer by plugging in the five for the t and seeing if it works, and it does. Now we're on to the lesson check but you can hold tight and do the lesson check after we do the material during class or you can feel free to start it on your own.